it's all about using what you have, the resources that you have, to do the best job you possibly can. Today's video is about intensive grazing, mob grazing, moving our cows and getting prepared for the new pasture, which is right over here that we just got done fencing. So we just fenced in, it's about 30-ish acres of land over there. I'm gonna say somewhere in a neighborhood of 15 to 20 acres of usable pasture land. And we've gotta split that up with our fencing program here. So come along today as we learn a little bit about intensive grazing and preparing a new pasture for the cows to graze. We are gonna do something a little different here than we've ever done on the Stony Ridge. Come along guys, we're gonna have some fun. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. Freedom, I'll tell you this what you can kiss. That's right. Honda. Alright everybody, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. If this is your first time here or your 50th time, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back here on the farm with me. All around us is a 150 acre first generation farm. The question I get all the time, where's the second generation? Well, there ain't no second generation yet, but I'm working on it. I'm practicing like crazy, trust me. <laughs> uh, so this is our little chicken coop right here. This chicken coop houses our egg producers for the farm, for the family, okay? We've got another chicken coop that's over in the pasture right now, and that's our pasture sanitation mobile, our egg mobile. Now, inside this bucket back here are <laughs> all the scraps from me canning up some tomatoes the other day and the chickens get these scraps. So we'll open up the coop here and we'll do a little scrap dump. This is a bucket, and I don't know why nobody's thought of this before, but it's a bucket with a handle on it. So it makes things easier to dump. Here go guys, get it. Why has nobody thought of this before? It's a bucket with a handle built in. There's a little notch in the bottom of the bucket. How easy is that? You're always using buckets on a farm. I'll post a link to these guys. You can buy them in a pack of 10. They're pretty expensive, but you just stack them in the corner of your building and you use it until you use the bucket up, throw it away and go grab a new bucket. It's awesome. Let's go over it, move the cows. Later this evening, the cows are gonna move over here. For now, we're gonna move them to a new section of pasture right over here. Whenever you're going over a gate, let's think about this. If we step on the gate right here, we're going to damage the hinges. We're gonna spring the hinges. So if we go over the gate right here, then we never have to worry about springing a hinge. Now there's some food for thought here. Why open a gate and leave an opportunity for animals to get out when you don't have to, or leave an opportunity for yourself to accidentally leave the gate open because you're in a big hurry and you do something dumb. Guess who's done that before? Me, on Christmas day. <laughs> so the first year that I had the cows here, I guess that was two years ago, on Christmas day I left the gate, the double gate open. I came home from my family's place and the cows were out in the front yard. Thank goodness they followed me like kittens and I was able to put them up, but what a bummer. So we're walking up here in the pasture and the cows are gonna be on this section of pasture for about 12 hours and then we're gonna move them again across the road to the next section. We need more time in between grazing periods on our paddocks. The way we're gonna do that is by expanding our operation today. So let's show you what's going on. These are the chickens that are left from our attack of the foxes. So we've got five chickens left out of, believe it or not, a total of 100 chickens. I'm checking the coop here to make sure everything's good. Kind of bored warping here. If you didn't see the video, there'll be a link to building this coop at the end of this video. That was a fun build. Here's what we have. Every pasture is sectioned off with poly wire. And this is the poly wire right here. Each fence is hooked to a poly wire and the cows simply graze in between these paddocks. We're gonna hook this on real quick, just like so. 
I came up with a design here. There are four posts, one, two, three, four. There are four gates around this. Off of the post can be as many of these lines of poly as you want. So typically we would have a line that went that way. This would be a section, that would be a section, this would be a section, and we actually split this section. So what we're doing is intensively mob grazing and mimicking what's happened for eons out on the Great Plains of the United States and or the Serengeti. The animals move, they mob, they mow, and then they come back through. So they only graze and they nip the tops out of everything here. If they're forced to eat in a smaller area, they eat the things that they typically wouldn't eat. If you just put them out on a great big pasture, they're gonna eat the sweetest and best and most palatable grasses and ignore the rest. Now they eat a multi-species pasture and they don't just pick through and eat the best. So they're intensively mob grazed on a section that's about an acre and then they'll be moved to the next acre. And if you think about it, if we have 80 acres on the farm fenced, then that makes 40 days of grazing. So by the time they make it all the way back through, the land will have rested for 40 days. And I don't know about your lawn, but my lawn, if you ignored it for 40 days, would be about that deep. <laughs> and that's the goal here. So we are building a first generation farm and we're intensively mob grazing. So let's move the girls. All I gotta do is take down this spring gate and these spring gates are from Strain Right. All the posts we're using are from Strain Right and everything comes from Farm Fence Solutions out of Worthington, Indiana. My good friend, Luke. Woo, babies, come on. Guys, you'll see flies. There are a few flies on our animals. We do not treat our animals with systemic medications or fly treatments. We keep them moving, mobbing, and mowing and we keep them away from their manure. So as they move to the other side of the farm, there'll be less and less flies. You see no manure pets really to speak of out here in this pasture. It's pretty amazing. The thought process behind grazing our animals in a place that doesn't have fresh manure. Imagine that. You know, if you ate in your bathroom every day, you'd be sick too. These cows don't eat in their bathroom. It makes sense. It's common sense, isn't it? Let's get them all moved, then we'll take you over to the new pasture where the grass is a whole lot higher. This is the calf crop from this year. We have 19 calves. And the bull is about to come through. Got a cow with a little bit of a limp right here. She had an injured teat. She's getting better, but she's got a little bit of a limp. And that could be from the bull trying to breed her also. Come on, guys. This is Tammy, she's our guard donkey. Tammy guards the babies and keeps the coyotes off of them when they're really young. Now, this little guy's thirsty. <laughs> this is called a Mirafount 3390 waterer. There is a water trough right here. It's a frost free or freeze proof water system. There's a heat tube that goes down in the ground, concrete pad around here, and then there's plumbing for this. And plumbing comes up, goes to that one, and goes to the next water and the next water. There are seven mirror fount water fountains on this side of the farm. On the other side, we have tire water tanks, which work great also. So now the cows are moved. It literally took, what, three minutes right there. They're moved, they're good to go. And then we'll get them moved over later tonight back across the road. Hook the gate and we're done. Just that easy, guys. That's how easy it is to intensively mod graze. You've got to check your animals anyway, so why not move them? No fertilizer on this land in seven years. No commercial fertilizer. Just butt fertilizer that rains out the butts of them cows. Awesome. That's what this is all about. Farming holistically, building soil, being smart, and not feeding the co-op, feeding your family. We also run multi-species pasture here. Multi-species means multiple species. In other words, if you like macaroni and cheese and you just eat macaroni and cheese for the rest of your life, you're gonna be sick. I don't care if macaroni and cheese gives you energy or not. These cows can't be on one single type of grass. They need multiple species of grass in order for the meat to be more flavorful and for the cow's immune system. So think about that. A monocrop is not a good thing. So onward and upward to our new section of pasture, which is right over here to our right hand side. You'll notice some hay bales over there. Those hay bales have a little fence around them to keep the cows off of the hay bales so they won't get in there and disturb them. 
if you have an anvil in your pasture, a cow will find a way to destroy it. So, <laughs> that's important. Stay tuned, we're gonna be using the Batwing mower in a future video. We've gotta mow a big old bunch of weeds on the other side of the farm where the cows just graze. We will come in behind the cattle at this point and we will mow if it needs to be mowed. If there's a lot of weeds, broadleaf weeds, summertime weeds, and it's late summer so we get warm season grasses and warm season weeds that will take our pastures over if we don't mow them prior to them seeding out. Now, over here I have a geared reel. This is a geared reel from Strain Right. All these posts are Strain Right posts. I stand by Strain Right as a brand. Again, you can find all the fencing materials at Farm Fence Solutions. So, here is another geared reel, Strain Right geared reel, and a bunch of junk. <laughs> so, we'll hang this on the back of the ATV, just like so. Poly electric fence wire from Strain Right, UV stabilized electric fence wire. Awesome. I'll show you how these geared reels work in just a second. These are gate handles. We might need to get in the Pioneer for this. <laughs> this is a lot of stuff. I think that's what we're gonna do. Abandon ATV, grab the Pioneer. Don't judge my messy shop. And it is messy. Hey, but we got fishing poles. <laughs> so I've got to grab a drill. So let's see, this is on Milwaukee. And we've got to find my screws for installing. Fence. There we go. So these are self-tapping screws right here and we'll be using those. The question is, was I smart enough to leave? Yes. Awesome. Magnetic attachment for driving these into the post. We have an outdoor kitchen pavilion going in right here, and next week we have front porch going on right here. It's going to be awesome. This is the pond that had the leak in it. We put a product called Damn It in the pond and the pond sealed up tight. Every day I come up here and I give the fish a little bit of fish food. These are catfish. It's a little warm this time of day. We may not see any fish come up. And again, <laughs> they're pretty unpredictable. They might come right up and start attacking that food. It's a nice cool day out here today. We don't get many days in the 70s like this in August. There they are. Isn't that cool? It's really fun to have a catfish pond on your property. I'll post a link at the end of this video to putting the fish in this pond. We put 25 channel cat in here and they are breeding. We built habitat in the pond and the cows will be up here grazing this area. You can see we've got some grasses over here that are almost chest high. 
That is awesome. It's not the best quality grass, but it's a lot of it. So now we're up here at the pond. Let's talk about exceptions to every rule. On a farm, and it's sunny out, I'm putting my shades on. On a farm, there are exceptions to every rule. What we have here is a water system on the farm that keeps the animals out of the ponds and creeks. However, there is no water system on this side of the farm. And we have a spring-fed pond right here and we have a spring down there that runs a tiny little creek, which will give the cows the opportunity to drink from the creek down here. Will they be lounging and wading in water up to their bellies and pooping all in the creek? No, they will not be doing that. However, it doesn't make very much sense for me to put in thousands of dollars worth of infrastructure and trenching and pipe all the way down here when I have multiple water sources on this side of the farm. So we decided to fence in the creeks on this, but we're gonna allow them limited access to the creeks. And first of all, we're gonna allow them access to the pond here to clean up the pond banks. So we'll let them in, we'll let them clean up the pond banks, we'll let them drink from the pond and then we'll set up a drinking station right over in that corner where the cows can't get in the water they can only step a foot over in there and get their nose to the water to drink okay so that's very very important about this section of pasture the cows will be up in the forest grazing right up here too it's super important for your animals to have a shade source and this entire paddock is just basically one big pasture slash shade source we will start seeing grasses growing in the forest as the cows graze in the forest and eat the leaf litter that is up high. In other words, the cows will trim all of this up and within weeks we'll be able to see all the way down through the forest because the cows will be eating the leaves. Now there are some leaves that are toxic to cows and sheep and goats, okay? So a dead cherry tree actually has arsenic in the leaves. We have no dead cherry trees, no dead green cherry trees out here, so we really don't have to worry about that. And the cows are pretty selective about what they eat. We will fence in all the way around this pond once we've had the cattle on this section of pasture for quite some time. Probably take them about a week to clear all that out. We will be moving the cows just like we're moving them over there, but we won't be moving them as intensively. In other words, there's so much forage over here that we're gonna put the cows in here for nearly a month, which is gonna give the rest of the farm over a month to grow back and have ourselves some stockpiled winter forage. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna fence in this section of hay bales. I'm gonna show you guys and I'll show you the solar electric fence charger that we run the whole farm with. And every electric fence on the farm is ran strictly off of solar from this IntelliShock solar fence charger and it's been super reliable. Tell you something else that's been super reliable, Honda. Guys, I swear by Honda products on the farm here. This is the Honda Pioneer 1006, all new for 2023. Awesome, awesome machine. Really great machine. This is a farm road that I cut through here so we could cross that pond dam and we could access this section of pasture. You'll see some fencing materials up here. I've got to come up a little bit later and gather up all those fencing materials and take them to a place on the farm. I've got a gate right here because I thought I'd be fencing this a little different. You see the weeds? There's a bunch of weeds in this pasture. That's okay. Cows will graze right around that. And this is our hay for the year for this section of pasture. Now, this gives you an idea of the grand scale of the size of this pasture. So currently we are in the middle of the pasture and I have to run a poly wire all the way down to the bottom of the hill. You can't even see it on camera, it's so far. I have to start that wire up here. And the reason I have to start that wire up here is because that's gonna split down the middle of the pasture. As I move the cows up the hill incrementally or down the hill incrementally, I will remove that section of cross fence and hang up one of those geared reels and actually i'm thinking this through the cows will actually be moving onto this section first that we're standing on so we'll rope it off from the top of the hill and once the cows have grazed all this we'll run it right back up through here and block it off again and have it ready for next time so 
We also have to fence in the hay bales. The cows will get in here, they'll bump, they'll knock them over. These are not the highest quality hay bales, but they will do. We're gonna roll out over 130 hay bales on this section of pasture this winter. It is going to be awesome. We're gonna see this pasture completely turn around, and this pasture right here has never had fertilizer on it. The grass seed that's going in this pasture comes right out of these hay bales right here and goes right out onto the land. You're going to love that. Be sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll see more of that this winter. Now I've got to go ahead and take these step-in posts. I've already got stationed over here and we'll go ahead and step in and rope off our hay bales. These are strain right step in posts. This is the step, that's the spike that goes in the ground, and this is the pigtail that holds the wire. It's just that simple. All of this is roped off by strain right step in post, and the rope that we use is an electrified fence rope, okay? So that's important. We place this in a way that we know we're going to round a corner right here, so the hook is going to go to the inside. I'll show you that real quick. And these simply step into the ground. And we need more rain because <laughs> that was pretty hard to step in. Every 15 steps, I will put a strain right step in post. Now that we've got this area fenced off around these hay bales, there's another stack of hay bales down in the middle of the pasture. I've already put the step in post around those, and we're going to take off straight down the middle of the pasture all the way to the bottom of the hill, putting a step in post in both the high spots, the low spots, and every 15 paces. So, my guess is about 35 posts. I'll probably have to go halfway, walk back up, get more posts, and go the other half. Now we've got our post ran all the way down to the bottom of the hill. I'm going to show you guys how we attach to the steel post down here in just a second. This is how we attach to our pigtail post. We're just going to take our pigtail that we make on our end of our strain right reel and that's it. Make sure that post is set nice and then we'll take this release the brake and head out through here with it as long as we don't have it wrapped around <laughs> this so if you don't do this right when you put it up we'll have a rat's nest just like i've got right here perfect loop it around and then we'll go that way We're at the end of our line. We are simply gonna cut this poly wire and this will surround this. This will stay here permanently until winter time as we slowly chip away at feeding these hay bales. Let's make sure we're in good shape here. Air on the side of more wire than we need. All I do is simply tie a loop on the end, just a granny knot, just like so. And bam, we're ready to hook right onto our post that's it that's how easy it is to set up for intensive mob grazing guys the next run we're going to make will go down this direction but first we've got to install our solar fence charger so this is a fence charger that we use it's called the intellishock 120 there are two batteries in here they are charged by a solar panel this has been in use for around three years here on the farm and simply connect it with alligator clips right onto the wire and then the ground goes right to one of those step-in posts and that's all we need and then we'll energize every bit of the poly wire for this entire pasture that is really cool like i said our ground clamp goes right to the bottom of the step-in post we'll tie our loop on the end here so we've got a loop a loop and another loop we want all these loops to be encapsulated with one another the way we're going to do that is we're going to wrap this around 
our step-in post. Then we're gonna take our alligator clip and put it on this big fat wad of poly wire. And now we're ready to go that way. We've got the fence ran all the way down here. It might not make much sense to you why I walked through the pasture with just the wire and not the step-in post. What sense does that make? That makes a straighter fence. <laughs> That's what sense it makes. So I'll pull it tight and then I'll go in and put my step-in post in place. Now we're gonna attach to this steel post and all of our posts on the farm are pipe fence just about. We've got some wood fence, but mostly pipe. I want this to last forever. I don't want to fix it when I'm 80 years old. Now all I have to do is maintain the pipe fence instead of replacing post when I'm 80 years old out here. This is my retirement plan. This is what I want to do. I'm 46 years old now and I want my fence to last me and my children and my grandchildren. Now I'll have to rebuild the wood fence when I'm about 80 years old and hopefully <laughs> I'll still be as spry as I am now. But the pipe fence will be here long after I'm gone. That's why it's a first generation farm and it's set up for the next generation and the next generation. This is a hundred year fence, guys. Awesome. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how I attach this little bracket and we'll hang up our reel. Once again, I preach to you, strain right, strain right, strain right. So this mounts to the face of the post, okay? It's a little hook and we can hook off wires to this hook and run them in any direction from this post right here. We want this to be hooked up to the post about the same height as our step-in post so that we don't have an undulating height of our fence wire. That will keep the cows in here. Now, does this fence hold the cows back physically? This one does. A good perimeter fence is important, and then good poly wire is important. This is called poly braid. It's good stuff. So we're gonna take our self tappers, and we're gonna install this guy, and I'll show you how we hang it up. Here's where our drill comes into play. Pop this guy on, self tapper right into the side of this post. 
you can tell that ain't grandma's chain link fence post that's a heavy duty schedule 40 post right there okay we'll take our reel we'll reel up the slack pull that wire tight just like so take this hook and bam hook it right there when we get ready to take up our fence to let the cows graze right here all we got to do is lift that off reel it up and take it to the next post drop it on the post that reel will hang right on top of a post and then the cows can come in here and graze and they can get back to the creek to drink some water again let me show you the creek because i think it's important for you guys to know it's not good to have your animals lounging in a waterway we don't want poop in a waterway we want the cows to have access to the creek but it's a tiny creek it's a little spring basically and that is what the cows will be drinking water from. I'll show you where the water drinking point will be here in this creek. So as we walk down, this will be the drinking point in the creek. It's about that deep pretty much. It's a little deep spot right there, a little deep spot there. This creek goes all the way up and is spring fed right off of the farm here. I'm all about keeping the animals out of the waterways. However, in this case, I have infrastructure in place I have a water tank up there. I have a tire water tank up at the top, but I don't have it plumbed in yet. And I'm gonna wait until fall to get out here when it's cool, do all the trench work and trench that in. And then we'll come in and we'll fence off the creeks. It's not gonna hurt the creek to have the cows in this section for 12 hours. Not gonna hurt it one bit. Up there by the pond, we're gonna beat up the banks of the pond. And we're doing it on purpose because I just dug that pond. And when I dug that pond, the banks drop straight down. I would like a smoother transition, so on purpose, I'm allowing the cows to kind of beat that bank down. In the fall, in the winter, when we bring the cows out here and we roll out hay bales, we don't feed them in hay rings, we don't take them to the barn. These are robust animals. They don't need to be in a barn overnight. We are gonna leave the cows out We'll unroll the hay out on the land. That will feed the land. They will trample some of it in. All the grass seed in the hay bale will fall out onto the land. The cows will hoof it into the soil, work it in there, and then we'll have better grass year after year after year. We also brought a forestry mulcher through here and cleaned this up. So we didn't just chop trees down and throw them away. They're not going to waste. They're out here as mulch. So all of this will break down over the years and this will be a luscious, green area for the cows to graze. It's all about using what you have, the resources that you have, to do the best job you possibly can. So we made the run from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Now we've got to section off because this pasture is long and fairly narrow. There's about an acre and a half to each paddock and we're gonna run cross fences from one side all the way through and we're right here on the power line to the other side. And that way they get about an acre and a half here. Then the next 12 hours, we'll reel up the fence and they'll get an acre and a half there. And then they'll get an acre and a half here and an acre and a half here and we'll just step it off all the way through. Now, you saw the aerial view. There's forest here. So I've got to go in after I make this first run with a chainsaw and find the most intelligent way to get through the forest right here. And you'll see that in a future video here on the Stony Ridge Farm. So 
After getting done with today's video, we've got to load up all that fencing material. It's up on the top of the hill. It's probably enough to fence in another five or six acres, maybe even 10 acres. We're gonna take that back and put it where our fence material goes. Then we're gonna move the cows this evening. Then the next evening, they'll be moved up to the big pasture that you've seen in the drone footage. Then we'll bring them over here and work them down the hill, back across, back across the farm, and we'll give our land time to rest. It's all about time to rest, guys, and that's what's going on here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I probably got another two hours out here of just organizing fence. You will see it when we put the cows in here for the first time. I'm a little nervous about it. I'm sure the cows don't know about it, but if they did, they'd be nervous about it too. You see there's a lot of weeds in here? That's okay, it's green, it's biomass, it builds soil. The cows will mow it, they'll poop out the butt fertilizer, they'll fertilize the land, and in three years, this will not look like this. After unrolling hay bales and building biomass and putting down grass seed and correcting the pH of the soil, this, will be a gorgeous pasture just like it is across the way. We've already got some big blue stem and some Johnson grass and some Eastern Gamma grass growing in here. All of this is native, native grasses right here in North Carolina. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me today on the Stony Ridge Farm. There's a lot going on and it's hard to film because I'm going in the bushes. Thank you guys, we'll see you next time. Ask questions, if you have any questions about what's going on here, please let me know. This is intensive grazing. This is grass-fed, grass-finished beef. These cows never get grain. Awesome. See you next time. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Except for, I need to move that one out right there to right here. Camera, don't fall down. Don't go fall down on the ground. Camera, how you doing? You doing good on the ground? Hey, bud, is that a tick? Yeah. You a tick on your head there, buddy. That is really cool. Really cool, man.